We have a working thing now. So this is the last talk of WooCon, and I've invited Ricky Ensley, who is wonderful and really, really likes music that's older than me. Um, so if anyone gets the reference there, yeah, I did. I'll explain like, it. What I'll does explain this it. Mean? Um, so I'll let her take it away. So let's uh, give her a clap and stuff. Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me to give this talk. And um, second of all, thank you for reminding me when we were originally discussing this that not everyone knows who Willie Nelson is. And so I added a new introduction um, to also uh, kind of segue into that by giving you a brief introduction of um, who I am also, which is how I got to this talk. Um, I don't normally give a big introduction about who I am or whatever, uh, but uh, I also feel like I should uh, share advice I give to um, particularly women, but just um, people in this field in general, to err on the side of being braggy, otherwise people won't know who you are or what you've done or whatever. And um, I like older music because I'm also a little bit older. I've been in this field for a long time at this point. I got my first job in tech um, in 1997. Uh, working at a tech publishing company called Miller Freeman, and I actually worked in the customer service. So from the very beginning, um, I've worked um, kind of behind the scenes, working with people in the community before I um, became somebody speaking at events. Um, so I did that for a while, and then I um, my, got my first entry-level editing job on Sysadmin Magazine uh, in about 1999. And um, I worked there for quite a while. And I didn't go to my first tech event until 2000, um, which seems like a long time ago now. Next month will be 20 years that I've been in this field. So um, uh, yeah, back in 2000, I went to Linux World, which was a ginormous event. It's not around anymore. And um, 2005, I went to grad school while I was also working full time. And grad school is where I learned about imposter syndrome, because I'd been in this field for quite a while at that point. And, um, made a comment to another student about how um, I was taking a new job and going to a new company, and I was afraid they were going to realize I had no idea what I was doing. And um, she said, well, that's imposter syndrome. And so she told me about that. Um, so that's uh, when I, I went to Linux New Media. Uh, you might have seen Drupal Watchdog is here. They um, published Drupal Watchdog magazine. They do Linux Pro magazine. Drupal Watchdog is new for them. but. They do um, Linux Magazine is what Linux Pro is called internationally. So if you um, get it on the newsstand here, it's Linux Magazine. And um, they do uh, Admin Magazine. They did Ubuntu User. And they still do that in some languages, I think, and Raspberry Pi Geek. Um, and so I didn't get my first conference talk until 2007. So I'd, I'd been in this field for 10 years at that point before anyone got talked me into giving a talk at all. Um, I'd been completely behind the scenes. Um, and then in 2008 is when I actually started writing. I'd been an editor all this time behind the scenes. And um, because I'm a multitasker, I was in grad school at the time, and so I, I um, wrote something for a First Amendment class that I was also able to use on our website, um, uh, Linux Pro Magazine, and I launched my first blog as part of my thesis for grad school, which was um, uh, the Rose blog, Ricky's Open Source Exchange, and I wrote my thesis on how to highlight women in open source and women in tech, and I uh, did research on, you know, let's say you only have 1%, 2%, 5% women in open source. Um, there are many ways to fix this problem or, you know, increase diversity or whatever. You can't do all things if you're one person. What was the thing I could do? I could help highlight what women were doing in technology. Um, and not what they were doing to increase diversity, what were they doing at their jobs? You know, what were they doing? Uh, a CEO is a woman in tech. A person in marketing at a tech company is a woman in tech. Developers are women in tech. You know, what are some of these women doing, the cool contributions they're making? So I did that as part of my thesis and then also part of my job. Finished grad school, uh, uh, decided to um, uh, changed careers a little bit, stay in open source and be the marketing director of a tech company it lasted three months and um, decided I, I was going to go freelance and I, and I was a tech journalist and worked at Usenix. Anyway, so now 2014 I joined Red Hat and that's where I am now and um, I'm a community manager on opensource.com. Uh, we interviewed some of the, or we um, got contributions from some of the speakers here before the event. They wrote articles for us and um, so uh, Today I was in, in the hallway track and um, talking to um, another woman who's here and talking about, I, I mentioned to her that I've been in this field for 20 years now, which the thought just really 
occurred to me recently, and um, we were talking about how do you b avoid burnout in a field like this, you know, for 20 years, particularly if you're um, in, in a, a smaller group like women or, um, you know, the, these um, groups where we're still having uh, issues um, that need to be resolved, I guess. I don't want to go off onto that whole other tangent, but I was telling her, you know, um, one thing I've realized to stay in this field is if I'm angry, and if I'm starting to feel angry a lot, I have to change something because I'm not going to fix everything overnight. So what do I have to change? Do I need to change my position or my behavior or um, remove myself from situations? And if I'm feeling discouraged, what do I do? Well, I go back to, you know, what motivated me to do my blog originally was instead of always focusing on the things that were, that I wanted to fix, sometimes I have to take a break and look at all the things I'm really excited about, the things that women are doing, um, the things that my colleagues are doing, the projects I think are cool, you know, and so um, sometimes that's where I end up spending more of my energy. And um, I'm reminded of Mr. Rogers' uh, quote. Uh, that his mother told him, um, when I was a boy, I would see scary things in the news. My mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You'll always find people who are helping. So that's one of the things I've done to stay in this field so long is look at what other people are doing. So why am I telling you all of this? Um, as I said, I was talking to this um, woman earlier today who I've known, we were trying to figure out how long we've known each other, maybe nine or 10 years now. And uh, so your network is kind of a big deal in this field. It's one of the reasons I've stayed in this field is I get to work with all these cool people and I get to meet all these cool people. Coming to Australia has been huge for me. Last year, you know, I was like, there are all these people I've never met, you know, because I see a lot of the same people at um, events in the United States. So it's very exciting to me to um, uh, come and, and meet new people. And that's the other thing that I've really been um, paying attention to is to make sure your network is as diverse as you want open source to be. Um, I want to hang out with people that I am, um, that make me uncomfortable sometimes, that people that I don't agree with, um, people who communicate differently than me um, about the same topics, because maybe I won't agree with the way they are communicating their point, but it's very helpful for me to hear where they're coming from, you know, and, then the, and how they communicate reaches different people and those people respond better to a different form of communication. So, um, as I was talking to her today in, in the hallway track, I was saying, you know, we are surrounded by the smartest people in the whole wide world. 20 years later, think about how much technology has changed in 20 years. Think about how much diversity has changed in open source in 20 years. Not that much, you know? I mean, it's, we've made improvements, don't get me wrong, but not at the pace that we should be for how intelligent collectively we are. Um, for example, people are still recruiting for rock stars. Um, this was from today. I did this off of Dice.com. I just put in Rockstar for job descriptions, 457 positions. Um, I, if, you know, I, I gave this um, background on myself. It was 10 years before I spoke in public. You know, I would have never applied for a Rockstar job, and I'm not the only one. A lot of women and a lot of men are not going to see themselves as rock stars. Um, and so when I hear that expression, it's just like fingernails on a chalkboard for me, you know, 20 years later, rock stars. So, mamas, don't let your babies um, grow up to be rock star developers. Um, I, I was inspired to have that title because of um, a song Willie Nelson wrote. Who's familiar with Willie Nelson here? Okay. I'm really sad there are a few people who aren't. Um, quite a few people who aren't. But um, I've been listening to him since I was a kid. And he's an um, American singer and songwriter. And he's actually been writing songs uh, since probably the 50s, he wrote um, a song Patsy Cline made quite famous, Crazy, it was one of his songs. And um, he wrote, um, or he didn't write the song, he recorded um, Mamas Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up To Be Cowboys with Waylon Jennings in 1978, and in 1979 it won a Grammy Award for Best Country Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocal. So that explains the title in case you weren't familiar with Willie Nelson. Um, so. What inspired this actual talk, though, was a couple years ago, um, who, who knows who Jacob Kaplamas is? Okay, so he, yeah, he, he works on uh, the Django project. He's one of the um, core contributors to the Django project, and he's often credited with creating it. He did not create it. Uh, but I know him because I'm from Lawrence, Kansas, originally, and that's where he lives. That's where Django started. Um, it's a web framework, in case you're not familiar with it. And um, 
Um, it actually started at the, the newspaper company in Lawrence, Kansas. So I know that group, and um, we actually ran together in a running club, you know, and, and, uh, and I really like um, the stuff that the Py Python community does and the Django community does. So I was watching the video of, um, of a PineCon a Pine talk that he did, a, a keynote, and he was talking about um, Rockstar developers and how he gets credit for founding this project that he didn't found and um, that, you know, he's treated like a rock star developer and he, his point in his keynote, which I recommend you watch, is that he's actually just an average developer um, and um, it, he had a great analogy with running because he's run, um, I believe, a 50K and um, people are really impressed by that. Well, I've run a 50K, um, and when I tell people they're real impressed, I'm like, uh, if you saw my time, I mean, I, I didn't die. You, you can say you ran it if you didn't die by the end, and that's where I am on speed, you know? And so my goal was to survive, and so he comes in in the, in the middle range. And um, so this is a really great talk. So I was listening to the talk, watching the talk, and, um, and I started thinking about Willie Nelson. So let me tell you how I started thinking about Willie Nelson. Um, so, the Django project is named um, after um, Django Reinhardt, and the Django project is a, is a really great example of a great community, as Py Python is too. Um, and I just got these stats uh, this week. I pulled them. So the community is um, very big. It's um, international and um, uh, very active, vibrant community. With and they uh, have very nice diversity, like the the Python community does. And um, so I was thinking about um, uh, what the, his point about, um, you know, people are still recruiting for rock stars. And so I started kind of Googling stuff while I was listening to him. And I found this article by um, Scott Hanselman. And uh, um, he talked about the myth of the rock star programmer. And does anybody know who Scott is? I think he was one of the um, uh, co-chairs for OSCON last year. And I, that was the first time I'd met him in person. I didn't know who he was when I read this. Um, but some things he said in his article were calling out rock, star demotivates, rock stars demotivates the whole team. And um, I found this uh, on um, various projects I've worked on, opensource.com, for example. Um, occasionally, people will introduce me as the person who runs opensource.com. And I'm like, no, no, no. It's, um, I don't. I don't do the scheduling. That's Jen. She vets a lot of the, um, uh, most of the proposals that come in. That's my colleague, Jen. And then, our, you know, our colleague, Jason, vets, um, you know, OpenStack topics and, and um, some, he does our technical editing. And then we, Alex does social media. And then we have these community moderators. So I certainly don't run the site. So um, uh, I, I get how that would be, de that's demotivating to the team if, that one person's getting all the credit when it's a team effort, right? Any project is like that. So having a rock star who's getting all the attention and accolades, it's very demotivating when you know, I wrote the code that nobody else wanted to write, and I had to stay and write that, you know, or, um, or sysadmins, you know, they don't get the fame and glory. Going back to the beginning of my career, I totally get it, you know. Uh, sysadmins are like editors. Um, if everything goes well, they never, nobody knows you're there, right? And if, if everything is working and there weren't mistakes, it means you did your job. You also get no glory for it. Um, so another thing um, he said is telling people that they're rock stars is a problem because they might actually believe it. And uh, that's also not good for a team. So he said that the reality is a normal distribution curve. Lots of good average senior developers, some amazing outliers, and some junior folks with potential, and some folks that suck. And he went on and said, um, uh, are rock stars about lines of code? No, good developers solve problems. More specifically, they make problems go away. They fix problems rather than complaining about them. He adds, it's diversity of thought and experience in a team that makes a rock star a team. That's what you really want. Put thoughtful and experienced architects with enthusiastic and positive engineers who are learning and you'll get something. So um, when I was thinking about this idea of, uh, you know, what, of rock star developers, I, I looked around for what other people have written, and um, uh, there's this article on Higher Light by Nathan Hurst, and it had been posted then on Hacker News, and um, it was really funny to see some of the comments that people wrote um, about uh, what developers think, you know, when you say you're looking for a rock star. And so somebody wrote, if by rock star you mean someone that parties all night, comes in late and hungover, has weird contractual demands, and trashes hotel rooms on business trips, then yes, I guess I'm a rock star. When do I start? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Um, another one wrote, don't, don't forget to bite the head off a bat and trash the place on your way out. Um, and, you know, uh, people think different things when you say rock star. Um, I've, I like older music. I uh, like ACDC, um, you know, I like Depeche Mode and The Cure, and I like old-timey country music, Willie Nelson and Patsy Cline. Since I've been over here, um, I, I looked to see what um, Australians are listening to and, and what's on the pop charts, and I don't recognize a lot of this, and I certainly haven't heard any of it. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I just was looking for a regional example, so <laughs> if, don't be offended if you don't listen to this or if this is a bad site. I don't know. Um, so uh, Nathan in his article said, if you're um, recruiting, you know, maybe you need to spend more time thinking about your requirements as opposed to saying, I need a rock star. Maybe you should be a little more specific. What do you want them to be able to do? What level of, of experience do you want them to have? What kinds of experience do you want them to have? Um, what kind of programming languages, how advanced, um, you know, does their skill need to be in, in these programming languages. Um, and also, um, in, when you're recruiting, it's a good idea to talk about um, maybe what kind of a culture they'll be working in, what kind of a team they would be working on to give them an idea. That's going to be more helpful in finding somebody who feels like they're going to fit in um, as opposed to them thinking, I, I wear a rock star label they'll be thinking, I work well in that kind of a situation, or no, that's the kind of situation that I would hate, I don't want to apply for this. Um, and, and then talk about maybe the culture, you know, that uh, it's, you know, you set your own hours or um, whatever kind of culture you have. Or, you know, we'll give you a keg in the kitchen for me. I don't, that's not a motivator to work in a company. So, um, like I said, I was, I was watching Jacob's talk and I, I started thinking about Django Reinhardt, which is, um, what the Django project was named after, and anybody heard Django Reinhardt? Another different kind of music, right? He's awesome, a, a jazz guitarist, and um, uh, it's all connected. He's a huge inspiration for Willie Nelson. <laughs> and so I started thinking about Willie Nelson, and this is why I'm a writer, is, you know, this is how my mind is working the whole time, and so I'm watching J uh, Jacob's talk, and I'm thinking about different musicians, and I've written an article in my head by the end of this talk, um, but I also listened to his talk, it was very good. Um, <laughs> so last year, Willie Nelson um, and, um, uh, uh, released a collaboration with Merle Haggard uh, called Django and Jimmy, and it topped Billboard's Top Country Albums chart and reached number seven on the Billboard 200. That's my copy of one of his records and part of my record collection. Um, and so then, uh, I, while well, I was thinking about this, um, uh, this talk and the article I was going to write, um, which is on our website, um, I pulled out a bunch of records, and then those, the little things are cassette tapes, and that's what we, that was, <laughs> I have some cassettes also that I listen to, and they're kind of like a record, but you have to push a button to go all the way back, and you can't pick the song you want, and they're really complicated, and they degrade over time, but, um, <laughs> Um, so, Willie Nelson's not a rock star, but Rolling Stone um, magazine uh, listed him as, 80 on, uh, as number 88 on the 100 greatest singers of all time. And so he's up there with um, Elvis, Aretha Franklin, um, John Lennon, Bob Dylan. So, not a rock star, though. So, um, oh, I think I left out. One little thing. Oh yeah. So um, uh, Wynton Marcellus, who does, he's a, a jazz musician. He had this great quote uh, about Willie Nelson. He said his phrasing is very unpredictable, but it comes out poetic and very logical. And um, I think that that uh, describes um, developers also. You know that you want these creative developers. And so I started thinking instead of rockstar developers, we need Willie Nelson developers. We need this new standard in open source. So what is that? I'm glad you asked. Um, Willie Nelson developers help others succeed. Like I said, his career started long before he had a solo career. He was um, writing songs. He wrote um, songs other people made famous, including Patsy Cline. Um, he was a disc jockey, uh, and so he was playing and promoting music other people played. He played bass for Ray Price, um, another um, wonderful uh, country singer and performer, traditional Western swing. He passed away. Uh, fairly recently within the last few years. Um, and um, yeah, and he's written songs like, uh, Roy Orbison has also made famous um, quite a few other people. 
Um, he also is co continually, continuing to learn new skills. Um, he, uh, you can find on YouTube, actually, he was doing a magic trick on his tour bus. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily a skill everyone needs, but I thought it was cool that he's in his 80s still learning all these crazy things. And he um, uh, has uh, been in movies, uh, television. He's on The Dukes of Hazard. Does anybody know what that show was? Okay, because I was a huge fan. I had a hamster named Enos when I was a kid. <laughs> My brother had Boss Hog, and so he was on an episode of Dukes of Hazzard. And um, he's a uh, black belt, and uh, he, last I heard he was a fifth degree black belt. I don't know how many degrees there are, but that was a few years ago. And, um, and he's even recorded reggae music. He's um, always trying new things, and that's the kind of thing that we would want in developers, you know, is picking up new skills. We get new languages all the time. Some of them are good for different things, so uh, if you're only doing one language, it's not going to help you be a Willie Nelson, pick up some new skills. Um, he's very accessible, which I really like. Um, I have seen him play at, um, at a, a, a county fair from like the dirt floor of a, a rodeo area or whatever in a folding seat, and then I saw him play in historic theater in Lawrence, Kansas. Um, a real small little theater, and then I saw him play in a really fancy theater one time because somebody gave me a free ticket, and um, it was like $200 a seat, otherwise I would have never been there, so I was with fancy people, and um, so, but he, it's nice that he plays, you know, and is accessible for different people, and then he's also, um, he does uh, farm aid, uh, which helps a lot of American farmers, you know, uh, fundraisers and that sort of thing. And I think that um, programmers need to be like that too, where they show up at, uh, at um, events that cost a lot of money, but then community events, you know, low cost events so that anybody, and you see that here, LCA is great for that, where you um, get to mix with a lot of different developers um, and people from different areas of technology. And then um, using the best tool for the job. So how many people um, have come to a Linux event with a Mac? Right, okay, so I've been to many Linux events with Macs and I've gotten grief for it before, but you should take the tool that's the best for the job, right? Lots of Linux kernel developers actually use Macs and develop on Macs. So in Willie's case, he actually plays um, uh, a, a classical guitar that it, it's not what most country music uh, musicians play. And um, uh, in his case, it's named Trigger, and it was a $50 Martin classical guitar that he bought a really long time ago, 1969. And he said, I think this guitar has the best sound of any guitar I've ever played. So he continues playing it. But you don't have to use the tool as it was created. And so he's got a big old hole and trigger that he has to get patched all the time because you're not supposed to play these with a pick. And that's what he does. But he gets the sound he wants. So he's very innovative. Um, and I think uh, Willie Nelson uh, developers are strong leaders. So uh, in addition to playing backup in bands and writing songs and that sort of thing, Willie Nelson leads the band, his family band. That's my friend Kevin on bass. Um, I'm really proud of him that he plays with Willie now because he's been a musician for a really long time. So shout out. <laughs> um, and and uh, Willie Nelson plays um, and uh, records with and uh, collaborates with a, a very diverse group of people. Um, in 1972, not long after getting Trigger, Willie retired and moved back to Texas. Um, and um, Jerry Jeff Walker, who's an American singer and songwriter and lived in Austin at the time, I don't know if he still does, but he, he said the Austin scene always was a little bit different, always an eclectic mix. And that's what Willie was tapping into. And that's when he, um, Willie came up with this whole new sound. He was just playing and hanging out with these music, local musicians. And it was, um, uh, this, uh, the outlaw country sound. Um, and so he's, I think he even has an album, I can't, out, the outlaws, that's what I think it is, um, with uh, Waylon Jennings and some other um, performers, I think Merle Haggard is on it. And um, so he said, that's what Willie was tapping into. He was um, mixing with this diverse group of people and doing something a little bit different. And um, all of a sudden his career just completely took off and um, he became the Willie that people ended up you know, knowing about and, and becoming famous. So, um, uh, and, and to this day, he still uh, records with lots of different people. He has another album coming out pretty soon. And I would tell you what the theme is, but it's slipping my mind right now. 
but I only know about it because he wrote a song that's not nice about Trump, I think. So, um, <laughs> so I'm really excited. It's supposed to be out soon. Um, so anyway, he, um, he uh, kept playing, kept learning, kept picking on Trigger and collaborating with a wide range of people. And now he has this giant body of work. Uh, I showed you some of the records I have. I have a fraction of the records he has. Not all of them are as good as the others. <laughs> some of them are exceptional, and then some are like, you know, he's just so prolific, you know, he throws stuff out. And that's um, how developers are going to be, or that's how writers are. Not everything is going to be a hit. Um, not everyone's going to be the rock star. Sometimes you're, you know, you're just writing the content that people need, you know. Um, uh, you're, you're just getting the, the word out, the news out, you're just documenting something. It's not glamorous, but um, it's going to be really useful to the person who needs the documentation when they find it. Um, so if you're not a rock star developer, good for you, um, shoot for being average or try to be more like Willie. And I love this quote because he said, I never gave up on country music because I knew what I was doing was not that bad. <laughs> so, and then I've got some time for questions. Thank you so much. like a rock quiz thing where we just quiz you about Willie Nelson for like the next 10 minutes if that's okay. <laughs> I don't know about that but oh, we can try. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? All the way up back of the room. No more running. Can I borrow your presentation, just do search replace with Johnny Cash and like just reuse it? Yes, I'll send you my slides. Because <laughs> it's true that we all have someone in that tone. Yes. And I think that's a marvelous uh, way of presenting this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> you did ask for this earlier. <laughs> I don't want to run. <laughs> Well, some people like to run. So I've hired a few rock stars in my time, people who refactor everything into code that only they can fix uh -huh. and want to use the shiny tools that nobody else understands. If, you, if you've got a rock star on your team, do you have any suggestions for what to do about it? <laughs> um, that's, that's a really great question, and I'm, I think there could actually be a whole talk on that. Um, I would say uh, one thing that I've, I have been very conscious of, which, um, what, which was uh, an example of that was the blog I launched years ago on Linux Pro, was I think it's very important to make sure that the people who aren't rock stars are getting um, recognition for their contributions. Often those are people that um, uh, aren't good at promoting themselves. Rock stars tend to be the people who are very good at self-promotion. That's why they're rock stars. Um, or they are very good at, or, or they happen to work on things that are um, more easily recognized as being a contribution. And so by making sure that the other people on the team are getting recognized for their contributions. For example, uh, Jen Y. Kuger, my colleague, um, who is our content ma uh, manager on opensource.com, um, if everything publishes every day, nobody notices what she does. But that's actually a huge deal that everything publishes every day, you know? And so I make sure that people know all of our stuff, like you all know now, all of our stuff goes online every day because Jen schedules it and makes sure that we always have content to go online, you know? And so making sure that uh, the rest of the team is getting recognition for their contributions and people understand the value of that these contributions might not be as glamorous, but they are equally valuable for the project. So, do you think it's like it's from the comments there? It sounds like you might think it's it's a per, it's uh, it's a personality type. It's a p type of person who is just prone to wanting to bite the heads off chickens and trash the room. I, I don't think it is always um, because, for example, um, I. I, I had been working um, in publishing for 10 years before I ever was out in public at all, speaking or writing. I was b behind the scenes because I am actually very shy by nature and don't like being the center of attention. But luckily, I've had mentors that really pushed me. And um, Brian, who's the publisher of uh, Linux New Media Publications, really wanted somebody in the United States who would go and speak at events and help you know, promote our projects. 
and uh, magazines and our authors. And so I didn't want to do it, but we needed someone to do it. And so I don't always think that people are public figures or rock stars because they wanted to be. Um, often they are, though, because they happen to be, have out, more outgoing personalities and are more social and that sort of thing, or like attention, or you know, like being the public figure, you know. I suppose, yeah, I suppose the question I was kind of getting to was, what what, is, what do we need to do as a community, as community leaders, as people who are participants in open source communities to encourage the better, the, the, the Willie Nelson um, type personalities rather than the um, Van Halen trashing the room personalities? Um, well, I, I personally believe that um, making sure that people are getting recognition and encouraging people to get recognition. Um, uh, like I said, you know, I really try to make sure that um, uh, women who are not, at, well, and, and other people from other countries or whatever, I, I, um, are getting recognition for what they're doing, projects that might not um, be acknowledged otherwise. I, I try to make sure those are getting covered on opensource.com and so and then with individuals I try to make sure that they um, are letting people know what they're working on um, with my team once I join my team um, because I've been in the field a little bit longer you know I was like nobody knows what you're doing if you don't tell people what you're doing and that's how people get promoted over you or they get the recognition and they get the um, uh, acknowledgement for something you actually did or they or were part of you know and so as a community we um, have to help draw attention to what other people are doing, make sure that we recognize publicly what they're doing in addition to privately, um, you know, sending thank you notes or, you know, I couldn't have done this without you, um, and then um, encouraging other people to, and then with those individuals, you know, making sure that they are learning how to do a better job of promoting themselves and um, drawing attention to their achievements and contributions. Um, you mentioned a couple of uh, attributes to the Rockstar developer, a couple of them were positive, I would have to say, um, a couple of would, uh, would be mainly negative. I was wondering if you had a term that sort of like described the personality that just embodies all the positive things, like it could be charismatic, outgoing, helping us in promoting the uh, message of open source, and uh, if so, what sort of uh, um, advice would you offer to these people for interacting with the community? Um, that's a good question. Um, and, and I'm sorry I cut you off before you were done with your question before. I was just so excited that people were asking questions. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so um, uh, ask, ask your question again really fast because. Uh, number one, is there a positive or a, a description of the personality that encompasses all the positive, mm -hmm. if there are positive traits of a Rockstar developer, and two, what would be your advice to these people to better in interact with our community? Okay, well, um, okay, I guess um, the positive thing, uh, or if I had a different term for it, would just be strong leaders, you know, and so it's not much, so much as being a rock star, it's being a strong leader, but being a strong leader also means that you're not, um, often you're leading from behind, you know, and where you're making sure um, you can be a strong leader and make sure that you're, um, people on your project or a person on your project is um, getting recognition, you know, or um, uh, rewarded even, you know, that uh, maybe uh, uh, you know that there's um, a budget to send you to an event, um, but you really think that a colleague should probably be going to an event, but they don't have the confidence, you could be helping them work up their confidence, you can help them submit a talk. Um, and so as a community, um, I don't think there's one, one thing, you know, for me, because I'm in communications and I've worked in publishing and I've had these outlets, um, what I try to do is make sure that voices have outlets and encouragement to publish their first thing, you know, or to um, get recognition, you know, to I help people learn how to write a better proposal, or I reach out to people and ask them to tell us about their project and offer to help them do that, you know, so there's lots of little things like that, but it's um, uh, yeah, making sure that other people are getting the recognition and kudos and acknowledgement, either privately or publicly. I think this is probably our last question. So sometimes the person who's not getting recognition despite doing the work may actually themselves have a fair amount of confidence, be quite happy to advocate for themselves, say, hey, I did that, and yet the rock star and the rock star's relationship with management can be such that all of that's just 
ignored um, because it is perhaps better for management to believe that the rock star is doing the awesome things, it's help it, helped you do it, whether or not they had anything to do with it, etc. What do you, if anything, do you suggest you can do in that sort of circumstance? Less FOSS and more maybe workplace. Um, less what did you say? Um, less free and open source software, more like workplace. Um, well, uh, I, I think it depends on the specific circumstance, I guess. Um, you know, I, I had a situation before where I realized that my boss wasn't aware of it. He wasn't intentionally sexist or whatever, but he um, was not listening to me on things and listening to um, a male colleague who actually had much less experience than me. And, um, uh, and at one point actually gave all the credit to this male colleague for something I finally did because the male colleague kept saying it couldn't be done. And so I finally just did it even though it was his job. And then he was getting the recognition. And um, we had a very, um, I had a very passionate conversation with my boss, uh, you know, it, it, where I was like, if I, had I been a man, you would have been listening to me the whole time, which I have a problem with. I know you didn't do this on purpose, but think about it, you know, and then I had to say, um, and I was telling you all along, you know, and so that, we actually had to have that hard conversation. And he actually was a wonderful boss, great mentor, we, you know, and it wasn't a thing he was aware of. And by me bringing, um, attention to it. Uh, we never had that issue again. He was, uh, you know, once he knew about it, he was much more careful, you know, and so um, sometimes you have to be your own advocate and it depends on what kind of culture you are at with your company and what the process is there. I, at this point in my career, this was part of the conversation in the hallway track. The older you get and the longer you've been in this career, the less of a filter you have. And so I don't have a problem being direct anymore and going to people and saying, you know, this is a problem or this isn't going to work for me. I work better in this situation or you know, so um, I'm all for the direct approach, though, and going in, and, and but I know a lot of people aren't comfortable with that, and so it might be where you have an HR person or um, another person on your team who can help you, or maybe it's a thing that you have to um, uh, get help from another group. I'm also part of the Internet Press Guild, and when I have questions um, that are, as a freelancer, that were related to how do I negotiate this contract or whatever, I would go and get help from those people, you know, and then I have um, quite a few mentors in this field now where I can go one-on-one -on -one and get some help and ask for how would you handle this situation and actually get guidance on that. Did that answer your question? Okay. Let's thank Ricky again. Okay. Thank you.